Hello everyone. Today I will tell you about my last adventure. I will be testing my new trekking skis and the temperature limits of my sleep system below minus 15 Celsius or 5 Fahrenheit. After driving to the cable car and waiting for the next departure, here I am, gliding with my brand new trekking skis and 10 kilos or 22 pounds backpack. These skis are peculiar. They have a unique feature at the center called the skin, which grips the snow, allowing to go up. It sticks to the snow surprisingly well. But when the slope is too steep, it is not enough, so I have to adapt my path if I don't want to glide back down. Descending is trickier than I anticipated, even on small slopes, Gliding down without falling was a struggle. I have much to learn. For now, I am adapting my path on the slope, making S shapes, so my skis do not glide too fast. Overall, going uphill or moving on a flat ground is pretty intuitive and easy. Going down is not. Finding a good overnight spot is always a challenge, but even more in winter. You have to take into account so many factors. Don't set up camp in a basin or generally too low compared to the surroundings. This is where the cold air accumulates during the night. Don't choose a spot too high because this is where the wind will be strongest. Beware of avalanches as well. Don't be in an obvious corridor or another dangerous place, always check and take into consideration the avalanche risk. Then, as usual, beware of potential falling trees, wind direction, look for accumulated snow on trees that might fall if the wind picks up later, and so on. Then set up the coziest camp that you can. I always take a few so-called comfort items, meaning not absolutely necessary for surviving in acceptable conditions. I do all this to feel great, and to feel great I need comfort. So I always bring a chair, two pillows, yes two, one actual pillow and one pillowcase that I stuff with clothes. I bring another thick base layer set to be sure to sleep in warm, clean and dry clothes and also to protect my sleep system in the long term. I even have an electrical pump to inflate my sleeping pad. This is actually quite helpful. Tell me if you're interested in a video about that. After setting up the tent, the most important thing is to first unfold the sleep system and other compressed equipment like down jackets. 
every insulation gear item that was compressed needs to return to its normal shape and thickness to ensure a good insulation against the cold, especially items containing down. Moreover, down items always tend to take some time before regaining their full insulation capabilities. That sounds obvious, but those items don't produce heat. Our bodies do. They then trap it and store it around us. To do that, it needs to be uncompressed and loose so the different fabrics and materials they contain can do their job. Speaking of clothes, plowing snow and setting up the tent made you move and produce a lot of heat. But the next operations are less physical and with the sun gone and colder temperatures settling in, you may well start putting your extra layers. Your body will cool down fast. In winter, I like to eat as soon as I set up camp. And since I set up camp early, to have light on those short winter days, I end up having dinner quite early too. But this actually has the double benefit of giving all the calories I need to survive the cold temperatures. Also, it gives me plenty of time to look for an alternative to heat the dinner if the stove that I brought doesn't work. Building a fire, for example. And if all goes well, this gives me the time to explore with my headlamp, enjoy the moon and stars with a full belly. Trust me, this really enhances the evening experience. Time to call it and go to bed. I clean up the camp for the night to make sure nothing is lost because of a snowfall or wind and to ensure I have everything at hand when I'm in bed. I don't want to leave my warm and cozy nest during the night. My favorite trick is to prepare a hot bottle and throw it with the rest in the quilt. This will heat it up while I wash and go for a last walk. Then, I slide into a warm bed when I come back. I put my electronics, extra layers and a bottle of water in my quilt, so my body warms them and keeps them from freezing. I put some snacks next to the bed, in case I need more calories in the middle of the night. Speaking of a last walk, some do push-ups, some jump, others walk. The point is to warm up one last time, without sweating, to bring that warmth into the bed. If you are half frozen when going to sleep, not only you will stay cold in your bed for a while, but also you won't have a great night start, psychologically speaking. In winter, always be warm and relaxed. Have a good night. Good morning everyone. I went through the coldest night I ever got so far in a tent. Minus 16.5 degrees Celsius or 1 Fahrenheit around midnight 
and temperatures below minus 15 Celsius or 5 Fahrenheit the rest of the night. My AMAC equipment sleeping pad, which has an R value of 5, made it like a champ and it was lying directly on the snow. I can only recommend it. My 10 degrees Zen BV bed, which is a quilt paired with a hood attached to the pad, was definitely at its limits though. It has a comfort rating of minus 7 degrees Celsius or 20 Fahrenheit, but I already slept well with it at around minus 12 degrees Celsius or 10 Fahrenheit, with the same clothes and windy conditions. So I figured it can go a tad lower. Well, for me it doesn't. With a thick base layer and my down jacket, I wasn't shivering but wasn't warm either. So I didn't have the best sleep. As for my tent, well, the Dorsten Xmit Pro 2 still delivers. I set it up very low and put snow around it to seal the bottom vents and left the upper vents open. I had some condensation as you can see, but nothing too bad. I love the ease of setup whatever the terrain and conditions, its versatility and roominess. Last but not least, my stove, the newly bought MSR Pocket Rocket Deluxe, coupled with a four season gas canister. It barely worked at those temperatures. I could have kept it on my person during the day and in my bed during the night to keep it warm for better results, but this is cumbersome and well, I didn't. And the conclusion is, I should have done it. Next time, I'll maybe simply take my alcohol stove for such temperatures, since alcohol will burn the same no matter the temperature, unlike a gas canister and I don't want to buy a white gas stove for now. Well, I learned a lot about my gear on this little expedition. Please keep in mind that this experimentation is not done without a lot of preparation behind the scenes, without fallbacks in case of issues, a good knowledge and understanding of my own body and limits. You should not do this unless you really know what you're doing and have prepared multiple alternatives if things go south. As always, I will put the full gear list I used in the description. Feel free to ask your questions in the comments, I'll be glad to answer them. Thanks for watching this video, please consider to subscribe if you are interested in this kind of content or tell me in the comments what you would prefer to watch. See you in the next one.